What's up YouTube? This is John Helm with Helmwood Shop and Smithy, back with another knife making video. Today I'm going to show you all every step of how to forge a knife. So let's get started. First things first, we're going to know what we're forging. I had a buddy of mine ask me if I could make him a medieval kitchen knife and I looked up some historical examples and there aren't many because apparently most people didn't have a knife dedicated to cooking. The only people who would would be someone who worked as a cook in really like the king's court or something because knives were so expensive back then you couldn't afford to have specialized ones. Most people just had a small knife they carried and they used it for almost everything. But from the examples that I was able to find, these look like like the two best ones. But he decided he wanted this large meat carving slash cleaver knife. Now this is drawn to scale because I couldn't fit it on this sheet of paper. I'm aiming for a 12 inch blade and probably a five and a half or so inch handle. He wasn't a huge fan of this handle profile, so I'm gonna put this handle on the knife. Next, we need to know what we're gonna forge it out of. I'm using this piece of two inch by one quarter inch 80 CRV2. This is my new favorite steel. I love working with it. It forges easily, it heat treats easily. Uh, it's super tough, it has very fine grain. It's just a great all around steel to use. It's basically 5160 on steroids. So let's light the forge and get started. First step, I'm going to start forging in the tip. So we're going to do this by setting it flat on your anvil and then hitting in on the corner at a 45 degree angle. You don't actually want to forge this down, you want to forge it back into itself, it's called upsetting. One thing that will help is to tip it up just a bit and then come down like this. Once it starts to mushroom out on the sides a bit, take it flat, flatten it back out. The whole goal here is you really want to avoid getting a cold shot. That is, you don't want to let the metal fold over on a spot where you get a crease. So I spent most of this heat talking. I didn't get very much done, but... Back into the fire. tip forged in, I'm going to start forging in the tank. So, I want this blade to be at least 12 inches long, but I don't have a specific requirement. So, I know it's going to get stretched out a bit. I'm going to go to 9 inches right here, and make a little mark with a piece of chalk. You could use a sharpie or whatever, but I don't like to use sharpies on hot steel because it burns the tips of them. So I'll make a little mark there, and then I'll take that mark and put it right on the edge of the anvil. Turn it up and just cold forge in a little divot there. That way I can find my exact measurement when I'm going to forge this in. There we go. Now as I drag along here, boom, I can feel it lock in and I know that I'm forging on the right spot. So now I'll get it hot and forge that in. Make sure that you forge this in on the correct side. This side, where the taper on our tip is, this is actually gonna be the spine of the blade, not the cutting edge. So I'm gonna forge in from this direction for the tank. And now we're just gonna do a set down. So I'm gonna find that spot right on the edge of my anvil. I'm gonna angle my workpiece, and I'm gonna hit it on the back using the rounding face of my hammer. And I'm gonna hit it like the hammer is half on and half off of the anvil, like so. I spent too much time talking. <laughs> Went off and got cold on me. All right, another way that you can do this, which is the way that I really prefer to do it, is to use a straight peen hammer like this. Lay it flat and just take it down.
Now that I'm closer to my final dimensions, I went ahead and cut off the tang. I'll go ahead and forge that to its final size and shape. Alright, so I'll get it to this point where all it needs is a little bit of planishing and touch up and I'll stop there. You don't want to go too far with it because it's definitely going to get bent or twisted or something while you're working on the rest of the knife. So there's no need to spend time on it getting it perfect right now. So now we'll go ahead and start forging in the shape and the bevel on this blade. I like to start at the tip. I know a lot of people like to start at the Picasso, but I think it's really just a matter of personal preference. So you're going to lay this flat on the anvil tilt it up slightly, and just bang in at an angle right here on the corner. Start setting that bevel. Make sure you work it from both sides so you don't wind up with a lopsided bevel. Of course, you can straighten it out afterwards if you need to. And just like I do when I'm grinding a bevel, I like to get the edge set right about where I want it, and then just gradually taper that grind line back, or in this case, that forge line back. Apparently there is a uh, fire somewhere. We live right next to the fire station. You can hear those alarms going off. Hope they're not showing up from the smoke from my coal forge. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time that's happened. All right, so I took two heats in each section. Since I'm forging with a uh, charcoal forge, I can only forge about a three to four inch chunk at a time. So this took eight heats. The first heat on each section, I just take down the edge. The second heat, I bring back the edge just a wee bit. So you can see here, we have kind of a concave grind and the grind line goes, well, I say grind line. The line of the bevel goes back about an inch from the edge. So now that I have the basis of that uh, bevel structure forged in, I'm going to start using a hammer with a much flatter face and I'm just going to smooth this out and bring it back just a wee bit. Also you can see that it's starting to banana so when I forge this back I don't actually want there to be a super discernible line where the bevel begins so I'm going to forge back a little bit on the spine. This will draw the blade out longer and it will also help correct some of that banana shape. But if you look at the historical examples, these were curved knives. They had, they looked like they got bananaed while they were hammering in the bevels and they just left it that way. So I want to keep a little bit of that. Uh, it's a very distinct look, but I definitely don't want as much as I have right now. Now, I don't want to get the blade super hot when I'm doing this part of the forging, I want to forge at the colder temperatures because I'm really not trying to move the steel very much. I'm just trying to get everything presentable as it were. Now reaching a point where I have to be really careful not to overheat the edge or the tip of this while it's at the forge. It sucks. <laughs> I hate that.
You know, I've had this little short-handled two-pound hammer for years. I've almost never really used it. And then I tried it today, and it's like, man, I should have been using this thing all the time. <laughs> it's outstanding for uh, planishing, detail work, getting a nice, nice, consistent hammer finish on a piece. I mean, you really just can't beat it. There we go. I just had a couple lumps in my bevel. I to get this all smoothed out. Of course, I only buy the finest hammers from uh, my favorite hammer supplier, which is known as Harbor Freight. Which means that this damn fine two pound hammer definitely didn't cost me any more than, I don't know, six or seven bucks. <laughs> It's, it, I'll tell you this, it is definitely the only one from Harbor Freight that I left the original handle on because it feels good. I like this short little handle. Of course, you can't wail on a piece, but your hand never gets tired. You can swing it forever. Just giving it a quick straighten. Make sure my edge lines up from stem to stern. That's about as good as a man could ask for it to get. Got a piece of coal on there. All right, now I'm just gonna uh, draw out the tang a little bit. It's a little bit on the thick side and it's a little on the short side. So I'm just gonna lengthen it out. Widen it up a little bit, especially at the base. So you have a little bit of a, a crook the rest of the inside of your pinky on. Okay, so it is all forged out, nice and straight. Everything looks very good. So I'm gonna do a little backyard annealing here on the tang just to make sure that I'm able to drill holes in it. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could just punch and drift them. Um, but I usually only punch and drift the holes if I'm trying to get more width on the tang, if I happen to forge it a little bit too narrow. So I'm gonna put it in the forge, bring it up to critical temp, and then I'm just gonna turn it off and let the fire slowly go out. And it should be soft, not completely annealed, but soft enough to drill pretty easily at that point. There we go. We're just about at the critical temp. There it is. And I'll just let it slowly cool as the fire goes out. All right, so here it is. Everything is almost ready for grinding. However, this belly, it's not nearly as pronounced as I want it to be. I need to bring this corner back up like this. So I'm gonna heat up the tip, pound it down, and then try to flatten everything out again. Forge it over the edge of the anvil because I don't really want to forge the material into itself. I just want to bend it. It's gonna be hard to do, especially with it already being quiet. Actually, no, I think if I just forge this down some more, you get a little more banana effect out of it, it'll, uh, it'll probably do the trick. And that's all there is to it, y'all. This is gonna be one mean looking kitchen knife when I'm done. It would make a hell of a chopper as it is. It has some heft to it. Of course, I'm gonna have to grind a lot of that off. So at this point, I would just grind in the profile, drill some holes, and go ahead with my normalization and heat treatment process. As you can see, this really isn't complicated. It really only has a couple steps. Forge in the tip, forge in the tang, forge in the profile, forge in the bevels, you're done. The hard part is doing it well. It just takes a lot of practice. You need to get your reps in and you need to have proper hammer technique. It also really helps if you have a decent anvil or even an anvil shaped object like a piece of a railroad track. I've seen people use just a big chunk of mild steel that they found somewhere. And those will work, but remember that you're gonna do a lot more heating and a lot more hitting because they don't transfer the energy as well as an actual anvil. So if you're doing that, you should probably start off with a little bit of extra steel just to account for all the scale that you're going to lose. Of course, it's never really a bad idea to start off with extra metal anyway, just because uh, it gives you a little bit of leeway for screwing up. So I hope that you learned something today. If you didn't, I hope that you were inspired to go out and light the forge. I also hope that y'all enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you can see when I come up with new videos in the future. And until next time, y'all have a good one.